Okay, tell you what, let's actually stick around with the uh, standard format we talked about a little bit. Uh, with the top 10 decks now, um, I need to actually get that up, I apologise. The top 10 decks, I'm not going to lie to you people, are very similar, but there have been some additions to last week. And I think coming in at the 10th spot, Joe, is Rapid Strike Malamar, a deck I absolutely despise. I despise the decks where uh, your opponent can do whatever they want and your counterplay... You can't see me, Joe, but I've got in my chair now. I'm sitting down and I'm looking out the window because there's nothing you can realistically do about it. So I don't like the deck. Joe, do you like the deck? It's a risky pick, right? You're just <laughs> you're hoping that there's so much Mew um, that it's like putting people off Rapid Strike, maybe putting yes. people off Jolteon a little bit as well because those are like really, really hard matchups. <laughs> Yeah. I even think if Suicune plays Raihan and if they play Shady Dealings in Teleon, it forces three in K down on the board as well. Otherwise, you can lose that pretty easily. So oh, you're really a one trick. Um, yeah, I, I don't really like it. Um, you naturally can't play more than like one boss's orders on a good conscience either because you're just so focused on the setup. So there's a lot I don't like about the deck, realistically. <laughs> uh, the one thing I am enjoying is that uh, you can play... Uh, vip pass now and actually Wee. get a wide board pretty early which is spicy uh, i think that's a big upgrade to like great ball that was previously in the list um so that's something that i kind of am enjoying but that's about it really but you know what you're going for right you're you're looking to find the the turns where you build the hand big enough to just go bop and sometimes that pays off but i think even things like you put you on a clock pretty quickly now and they even throw a meloetta at you as well so they can force yeah. an awkward prize map at times so I can see why it's getting the popularity because people are just like begging and pleading to have a good new matchup because they've lost to it too many times. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, like I, I can't see it going much further than top 10. Nah. Um, yeah, it's just preying on sort of linear decks like Mew. That's what, that's what, and if you want to try yeah. on the gambit, like fair enough. And I mean, I don't know. I'm even really looking into percentages too, too much. But I know that Mew is a pretty big percentage. I don't know if it's gotten as big as something like an ADP was back in the day. So, hey, if you want to just try and have an auto win on Mew, I say try because you know, you want me to do that. But have a good Mew and then, I don't know, run the gambit a few times and just try and throw 10 cards at your opponent. And, and to be fair, sometimes that will work. Turn two, knock out their only evolving V or V match. Like, see ya. But yeah. yeah, tell you what, um, you wouldn't catch me playing it, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 Moving up to number nine in the tier three. Again, you could argue a similar deck just trying to prey on um, new VMAXs. And we have Gengar VMAX here, Joe, coming in at number nine. A quick, quick question. If you're playing single strike, let's say you got an event tomorrow and someone said you have to play single strike, are you going to go with a Gengar or are you going to go with the more Umbreon um, single strike Urshifu route? I'd still take Urshifu. Um, I think Jolteon is too big of a presence to not, and I think like Duraludon's even popping up recently as yeah. well as like this hot, hot yeah. spice. Uh, Zacian Zam is probably going to be in our top ten, um, so I, I want to have that coverage. It's just way more well-rounded than Gengar, which is again like put your visors up, try and bop a Mew kind of thing. Um, against the mirror, like it's not that bad because you just have to try and be a two prizer racing into other two prizes. Mm. And just like only put your VMAX into play if they've also VMAX sort of thing, so you can have an even trade. Uh, and you're just trying to race in that regard. Um, and you can do the same thing for Suicune, right? Just stay as a Gengar V and hope for the best. Hope that they don't get enough Inteleons out or whatever to just sort of ping down one of your one prizes. Um, but yeah, it's it's just much much more linear of what it's trying to do. But it, it gains probably like 10% over the Umbreon Urshi against Mew exactly. Yeah. So. It's like a genuinely good matchup, uh, whereas like Umbreon Urshi is actually only about 50-50 against yeah. Mew, uh, the way that <laughs> yeah, they've adapted. Is. So, uh, yeah, I would still stick to Urshi, though, because it's, it's got more 50-50s. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, when I've been playing some Gengar myself, I'm thinking, right, you know, let's try and match them. If your opponent flips over a Rapid Strike Urshi, you're like, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. getting a bit scared now, you know? Like, uh, yeah. And Urshi you're just out, right? You're just out, just out yeah. of there. Yeah. It's, it's, and Urshi, I know it's not like the big well beat we thought it was, but it's still knocking around. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting weakness is not the best thing to have. But hey, Gengar V, it's a two energy attacker, though. When I love me a good yeah. two energy attack. That keeps me a happy geezer. <laughs> uh, coming in number eight. And I think I described this last week as 
just a deck that's too fair. And standard is not about fair decks anymore. It's about crazy bonkers stuff. This is Ice Rider Calyrex, you know, coming in at number eight. Uh, on paper, fine. What, two for 250? Got Melanie support, you got Inteleon. You can throw up some Suicune to skew price trade. Suicune's a card that's been growing on me a lot. But I say as well. But it's coming yeah. in at number eight. How would you, how, what's your opinion on Ice Rider these days? I think it's trying to place itself as one of the better path decks in the game. You can't Marnie quite as much as like a Jolteon can, which is annoying. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's where it's trying to find its niche right now. It's trying to fan and path a bunch against Mew. Uh, it's really good against single strike because they self-damage so much that you can yeah. actually one-shot their VMAXs. Mm -hmm. um, and compared to like a Suicune Ludicolo, you have a bit more of a game against like a Jolteon. So I don't mind its positioning too much. But you're right, I think it finds itself being too fair too often, where just like, if Mew gets hits counter stadium, you're just going to lose. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be bad. Uh, so you are just crossing your fingers into a couple matchups um, here and there. But again, the Inteleon engine's cracked. Uh, having the option to randomly like high roll a Suicune turn one attack for tempo is really yep. good. Even just the 40 poke from the stupid ice rider like pierce or whatever it's called can set up v maxes yep. for you so that little those little prods can be really nice for tempo um and I, I i think it's a pretty sweet deck to be fair i really like cross switches in it and the yes. format hasn't taken it on yet but i still think it's like a really good way to go for ice rider <laughs> it gives it a lot more flexibility because then you can you know chain melanies make sure you're not breaking that huge mm. maximum damage output option uh, and settling for the um, Ride of the High King. So I, I do think it's okay, but it's definitely not like a top tier threat. Yeah, no. I like, uh, to people, like I said, I think, I'm not going to lie, when I covered Ice Rider, I, I did I did say this in a video, if I was going to say It's like, yeah, this list is basically Omnipoked with an extra shady dealings in Teleon. <laughs> <'Cause, Hey. laughs> that's really good. <laughs> but that deck is litty. Your opponent, you, you can just tell that the opponent thinks, like, they can't Millennium Boss and turn on sound. Like, lol, watch this, Melanie, shady dealings, pap, pap. Bring that over here. <laughs> it adds a that whole new fun. dimension. It adds a whole new dimension. It really does. Reminds me a bit of when uh, um, Firebox used to have the Nine Tails as well. Like, yeah, I can world and gust. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Keep it moving. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, super fun deck. But I just think it's a bit too fair. I think if you're a very good technical player, you can probably navigate. But you know, if you're like me and you need to rely on the strength, just the silly strength of cards, sometimes you might want to go somewhere else. But mm. coming in at number seven. Now, listen, I have an event coming up at the end of the week, Joe. Right. It's like some sort of charity event, and I have to play serious. So it's either going to be Mew or Single Strike, most likely. I've been testing them both on stream, and I'm not going to lie. I've been doing trash with both. So now I'm thinking, are we going to start going with some rogue picks? This deck might be the rogue pick. When with Duraludon V Max, Joe. Oof, I think Grant Manley, Grant Manley put this on the list. I think wasn't it Grant Manley? Yeah? Uh, it the, was Grant. The, yeah. The Adventures Discovery, completely different way of playing it. No longer are we settling for dud hands where you're trying to get Bronzong and Metal Sorcerer and Shovel and all that business. We're basically the same with this kind of deck, fellas. Like, yo, you can't hit me if you've got Special Range. Anyways, I'm gonna take my time. I'm just gonna manually attach. Yeah, you know what are you doing? I'm gonna hammer that away. Uh, and then get to rocking with a 220 attack every turn. That's the idea. Big charm, all that good stuff. Yeah, but is it a legit deck though, Joe? Is it just like a little bit of a wee? I'm just countering this deck and this deck. It certainly counters some archetypes. Like, I think it should beat Rapid Strike Urshifu every time. I think it should beat, like, mm -hmm. Gengar every time. Yeah. It even has a decent game into Urshi because you're like, you have these stupid supporters like Flannery and Avery that yeah. feel bad but they actually like when you're in the game it really back breaks an opponent because yeah. it puts them into weird spots all the time where they can't have enough hound dooms out to like chain their urshifu or whatever they can't get enough energy to actually one shot the duraludon and you play big charm as well to just try and put yourself that little bit out of reach of their one blow and then it just becomes too resource intensive for them to actually beat you uh, and again, Mew, you're actually, like, you play Flannery even though you have your ability because you are actually just trying to run them out of energies, right? So they can't even hit you for Max Miracle anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so you are just going to, like, it's basically the Wolves deck of the format, right? Where you're just trying to throw enough meat at them that they eventually can't hit through you for a lot of these matchups. Uh, and I think it's, like, as gimmicky as it is, I don't think it's actually that bad because you... Yeah. You have the four gear, you have Intrepid Sword, so your openings aren't that bad. And obviously you don't attack them till like turn five a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what you're doing is just setting up 
to the point where your opponent can't take like the seven prizes or the eight prizes that you're trying to feed them. Mm. Um, so I think it's okay into some matchups, but I think it's also extremely volatile. And like, if Mew went to a seventh energy card, I think that can already be enough to tip you into like a really bad spot. Uh, if single strike goes back to playing tool scrapper or tool jammer, you're in a really bad spot. So it's like walking this tightrope of just having enough to out survive everything. But if people actually can be bothered to make one card difference, you probably lose a lot of the matchups that Grant was winning at the time. Yeah, I think a lot of surprise factor could have helped him there as well. Because I've, sure. I've, I've, I've been watching him stream quite a bit, actually. And he's like, so, I've a lot, uh, sometimes you just rely on your opponents not knowing exactly what to do. And if they're playing yeah. the deck for the first time, then I wouldn't know what to do either. I'd be like, wait a minute, is he just not, is he not playing Bonds Long? Or is he, or, like, is he just not found <laughs> it yet? Wait, what, what's this Fannery doing? Wait, what, now, now I'm losing my bench because of Avery. I, well, literally, what's going on? So, yeah, it's pretty mad. But I tell you, I, what I have seen, though, is very scary. That, that Marnie... That Marnie comes out your turn too. Uh oh, like, I could be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, but it's a fun deck though. Fun deck, scary yeah. deck. But do you know what I find as well? So is it? What's the attack? Fighting metal, metal. That's the attack, right? Yep. Yep. So yep. It's like, where's that bloody fighting then? <laughs> Come on, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> Good thing, guys. <laughs> Sometimes that fight yeah. is a long time to show up, but yeah, yeah. super fun day. And you might catch me playing it at the weekend. You know, but I'm just thinking, right. Oh, boy. I might do it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to win, am I? It's just me we're talking I about, think so. I'm in the same event. So now oh, is it? This the, the, um, the Italian one, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, right. <laughs> in that case, now nah, I'm playing. What am I playing? I'm playing Smurgle, mate. Energy, have some of that. <laughs> no. That's a fun deck, though. Not going to lie, still. But it's, somehow, it's not on the top. I haven't been in preview no. these, though, getting a 210 smacks like, boom, <laughs> have oh, some yeah. of that. Oh, you packed oh, yeah. a better champ, V. This car pile, please. Try that yoga loop on me. It doesn't hit for weakness <laughs> in the active. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Um, comment number six. The resident... I don't want to say boring deck, but it is a bit boring, isn't it? Zacian Zam. Just always knocking about, isn't it? Zacian's a very good attacker. Zam's a very good attacker as well. Playing four robs of literally everything. It's a good deck. Do you have anything to add? Uh, Zacian, I think I? I think this is the less crazy Duraladon. Uh, and I actually think yeah. you could take some elements of Grant's list and add it to Zacian Zam. Like, I don't think Avery necessarily is a bad card or, like, Flannery mm. Hammers mm. going into Zacian Zam. I think that could all work realistically. Um, and I think just the fact that there's a lot less tool removal in the game, again, uh, has just put this back on the map that little bit. And uh, yeah, again, you're trying to be out resourcey, be annoying uh, with your Zama ability. Um, and I think it's reasonable, you know, yeah. it, it keeps you honest. It's just a reasonable, difficult deck to get through for a number of archetypes, it, like in enough time. I'm kind of low key worried that Hammers coming back does make that Mew matchup better. I need to test it a little bit more. Um, but I could see that being a headache uh, from you. Yeah, it's just a super strong, you know what I mean? Basic attackers, attack, they have 270 HP or 280. One of them can't be hit by VMAX, the other one two shots, yeah. And lets you draw three cards, yeah. It's a good fundamental deck, and it can't go wrong, honestly. Yeah. Um, it could be another one that I end up playing, but yeah, the, the Zams, they sneak up on you, you know, them Zams. You think you get away with it, then that Zam comes, oh, golly, <laughs> what am I going to do? Moving up to number five. Now, I was just shouting out Suicune a lot. I've been, I haven't really played that much of it, but recently I've been playing. I'm thinking, wow, this is a good trading card. But now it's come down from, I think, three all the way down to five, Joe. What's all that about? Is there, is there a reason for that meta shit that people have been playing it? Or maybe this Avery's knocking about everywhere? Because that hurts. That, that, that hurts this weekend a little bit. Um, what's been going on with Zation? Uh, I mean, I think there's that threat of... Oh, sorry, Suicune, right? Yeah, I think so, there's sorry, that... Yeah. That threat of Jolteon is a bit of a worry for the archetype. Okay, yep, yep. Maybe somewhat the threat of Urshifu as well being around. Uh, you don't have much of a game against either of those decks, particularly. True. Um, you're preying on single strike, which is really nice. Uh, and the Ludicolo <clears throat> can really help against the Mew, obviously. Um, but if they play bench smart, I think it's still actually a little bit unfavored for the Suicune. Mm. Um, I've been trying some interesting builds this week and actually trying to pop off with Melanie turn one, like a lot more. I'm trying some like combo Suicune style stuff where mm. you've got Rotom Phone, uh, to try and combine with Fleet Footage to try, <laughs> to try and hit Melanie turn hey, one that little bit yeah. more, I mean, uh, yeah, that would work. Yeah, yeah. which is pretty nice. Um, and I'm trying VIP pass in Suicune as well, by the way, I've tried VIP pass in literally everything at this VIP point. VIP pass was my favorite card from the set. Honestly. Yeah. It's turning out to be mine as well. I think, um, <laughs> 
So there's still some innovation there, and I I don't think Ludicolo is necessarily like locked in. I think it's good against some of the V Maxes, but I think we could find better options for Mew. I know some some people are trying like a Suicune and Hammers right now, yeah. to some success. Like it's not being played enough to see in the results, but it, it's doing okay. Uh, and I think there is enough space in just like Suicune plus Inteleon that gives you the core like consistency. I can do what I want kind of thing, mm. um, and then it's just down to you to fill those last spots based on the meta. So. I think it's very consistent. Uh, it could be faster because people aren't really leaning into that Melanie so much right now. Like if you start going, like let's just say for example, Glarian, like Articuno V plus Crobat in your list, turn one, yeah. it means going second, you actually have turn two tempo like a lot more often than you do right now, which is at the moment you're kind of like, there are some lists playing like three Melanie. You just never yeah. hit Melanie turn one yeah. with that build right now. Uh, so maxing out, your Melanie odds, just like how Mew has shifted towards if I'm going second, I'm going to try and hit that sparkle and hit you for some damage. Uh, I feel like Suicune needs to adapt to the point where it's like, okay, I've gone second, at least I can hit you for like 140 plus yeah, damage. Yeah, yeah. That's my like main reason I can see Suicune still climbing, uh, and I think that's an adaptation the format's sort of going to start moving towards. No, yeah, well, that seems pretty on point to me. Like I, said, I haven't played a lot of Suicune, so I couldn't give too much thought there. But yeah, that seems pretty good. Suicune, I, actually, no, to be fair, I've run into Suicune and Hammers a lot more recently. What has everyone putting yep. Hammers and Suicune for? I've been knocking into that, to be fair. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm a fan of Suicune now. But, I think uh, it's one of the own, the biggest punish for me right now is that it plays six energy and like one stadium to recover energy, right? So yes. people are just trying to be like, yeah, maybe yeah. they miss an energy drop but, like late on, even if they're ahead in the game. Maybe I can like gust and hammer and then they just like can't get out of the active for a couple turns and i can buy back time yeah so i can see why they're going for it reminds me of i can't remember the exact format but this is when adp dragapult eternals were big boys and then hammers were just flying everywhere <laughs> like even adp yeah. hammers was a thing you're thinking golly yeah so yeah, uh, yeah. it reminds me of it like that i was talking wait a minute mew actually doesn't play that much energy if we can just you know bop that one and bop that one and ko2 there uh he might be all right so yeah hammers and for, don't don't play him if you match me though. Play him and you play someone else. <laughs> Come in I know the, the feeling. Yeah, nothing better or nothing worse to say. You know when your opponent plays a hammer and it's tails. I'm always like, yes, get him. And they play the other one. You're like, <gasps> and then that one's head. You're like, God, oh, damn it. <laughs> it happens all the time, man. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> Start playing Rayquaza. Go and hammer off the edge. I would get it back anyway. <laughs> um, and speaking of Rayquaza, no, I'm joking. Uh, coming in at number four, <laughs> we have. Rapid Strike, Urshifu, v -Max. That's what it says here. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be... This could be an amalgamation of, I don't know, Melanie and... Um, what's the word? Moltres and... Well, am I missing any of the bills there? Maybe. What What are the top bills of uh, Rapid Strike these days, Joe? What are... For me, I think Melanie is the strongest okay. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do think there is some... Maybe some points towards the Moltres build as well. Uh, where you're trying to, like, Raihan burst the Moltres out of nowhere kind of thing. It's kind of spicy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think the Melody list is sweet. Like, just because Tord streams so much now, you get to see it in his hands, and you're like, how... You get to see the deck at its full potential, right? And you're like, damn, this literally beats every deck that isn't Mew. Like, I think it's favoured into everything that isn't Mew. Oh, even yeah. other Psychic matchups. I think it's just so, so good. Um... But Mew is a thing, and right now you're having to draw hotter than the sun to win that matchup, which is keeping its win rate just, like, average. Mm. Um, but literally, if you turn up to a tournament where you think there's going to be more counters to Mew than actual Mew, I think Rapid Strike beats everything that isn't Mew. Oh, wow. What is its game plan versus Mew that out of interest? What? Well, you're trying, to, you're trying to use Persimian and Telescopic to push your damage output to a point where you can... Like, either KO the Mew V out the gate, or you put Genesect in range of either Intel pings, or uh, you can Metacham them. Because um, okay. like if, if they attach to the Genesect, you can't ping them down anymore, but you can still Genesect them. Uh, or if they're putting, like, Meloetta into play, you can knock out that plus a Mew, or that, and set up a Genesect, and then you can Echoing Horn back that whilst also oh, setting okay. up another Genesect type yeah, thing. Yeah. So it's all based on, like, I have to Rapid Flow two times, and yeah. they have to be buffed up Rapid Flows, basically. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot to ask for when they're just like, you know, doing their thing, plodding along and being mm -hmm. super consistent at what they do. Uh, but that's like the main core strat. Um, and yeah, obviously it's, if it's the Moltres build, you're going to like only keep two prizes in play and have like a Sobble use to keep calling and hope that you can just like right hand kill them straight away afterwards with Moltres. 
Yeah, no, those, those, I think Leafon's doing it now, isn't it? Where they're starting to play more chess with Leafy on Moltres. It's so yeah. funny. Just, uh, I've been seeing it on stream. I was like, wait a minute. I think the first time I ever got exposed, or, or I seen, I should say, uh, Leafy on Moltres, I was like, the player gets to me, I'm like, hang on, how, what, what's going on here then? And they like just went, oh, why? I was like, oh, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, bing. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. So, yeah, yeah that little, little Ryan Moltres package is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, number three, I think the top three are the same. Uh, number three is Jolteon V. Now, I was a little bit surprised to see Jolteon doing so well consistently. But it is. And it's not playing the, um, what's it, Dust Knot package anymore. Uh, so, Joe, talk, talk, how is Jolteon managing to knock about these high tables still? What's, what's going on here? Uh, I just think it's a, a factor that, like, Rapid Strike should be very afraid to be in the game. And yep. Single Strike is probably like your worst matchup that you could expect like 10 percent of the field to be mm -hmm. but that's still only 10 percent um i think you're reasonable into mew again just because path marnie's a, a factor um and i think yeah. there is space to tech jolty on that little bit more if you really want to uh to make the matchup better i've been trying vikavolt a lot um Ooh. just to try and stall genesex so you can like you can hit them into range for you to yeah. then take multiple prize turns with the jolty on right yeah um and it just buys you more time to get intel ping damage like across a number of things, which is pretty mm. spicy. Um, so I've been trying out some of that stuff. But Jolteon, again, it's just super consistent, right? It has the speed lightnings. It doesn't need much to get going. You've got the fat Inteleon engine working for you. So it's just one of the more consistent builds. Um, and it punishes a lot of the other Intel engines, which is always really nice. Uh, can still pop some hound hours and that sort of thing and uh just just come out the gate swinging really so uh yeah i think it's solid and it's one of the best checks to suicune as well which is also like a popular pick because if you want to stay out of this weakness triangle that we yeah. see like at the top people usually go to suicune and then yeah. they just get hit in the face by a jolty on here and there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. pretty bad uh so yeah yeah, no, I'm a fan. I'm always a fan of cheap attackers, and it doesn't get cheaper yep. than one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have all these mad decks, you need to see a lot of stuff turn one. We have Jolty on. Can I get a Swubble? Can I get a Jolty on? Can I get energy? Yeah. There we go. We're cooking now. And as long as yeah. sometimes over a long event, because some of these events, I remember someone was there, I can't remember who it was, but they ended up getting one pack for each round they play in some event. It was been a big, hefty, long event, right? They, and yeah. Obviously, they did well. So over the course of a big, long event, you want something that's just cheap and easy to maintain. It doesn't yeah. get much cheaper and easier than Jolty on, honestly. Know what I mean? Golly. Number two, Umbi on V-Match, single strike, Urshifu. Um, super strong pick. You know what I mean? I'd like. It's the deck I've been playing the most of. I've actually been playing VIP pass, Joe. Are you a fan of VIP yep. pass and... Like yeah, I'm a VIP pass gamer as well. I oh, think yes. <laughs> the most important turn of the game in Pokemon these days, because yep. we have four turns, the most important turn is one. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, ignore the fact that you draw VIP pass later, because just think that you wouldn't be in the game if you hadn't hit the first yeah. one, turn one. So, uh, yeah, I just think that's the way to play the deck. You hit two insane type coverages. Uh, that mm. keeps you relevant. You can wall break, which is relevant for, like, two of the things we've already said on the list as well. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, decent tempo deck uh, with good type coverage to fall back on and gusting to really yeah, choke slam some stuff turn two as well so that's always nice yeah no there's a matter of time i've been playing single strike i'm open hand i'm like uh oh tower of darkness away earn and there we go we can play the game baby like <laughs> it's literally Thank God. That, <laughs> like, that one yeah. turn, like golly you know i'm a big fan of single strike it's probably the deck i might be playing at the weekend i'm not sure i think between mu v max and single strike i've played things like a whole lot more with mu i find myself misplaying all the time like oh i mean i mean with mu it's not i wouldn't say misplays you know like little things like you know uh Optimizing some, the sequencing. Yeah, that yeah. sequencing is the correct. And it's just because I haven't got enough reps with the deck. And with a single strike, I've played a lot more. I know sort of more sequences. I might not go in with that. Super strong, though. You know what I mean? That, the quick gust, you know, just, just closing games up before it even started sometimes. Yeah. Um, energy acceleration from the deck is just like, oh, so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single strike aficionado. I'm not surprised there to see it number one. But what I would say, I mean, number two, I should say, but if you look into Counter Mew, it has, we've mentioned it already, it's only got about a 50-50. So don't just, you know, <laughs> don't expect to just run through all the Mews you play. The Mews can stay in it. <laughs> like, and yeah. they will. And they will as well. Are there any sort yeah. of top tips for playing against uh, Mew V Match? Or is it just literally just trying to run and hope? Or? Uh, I mean, it's just, 
a couple sneaky things like Houndoom can kill a Mew V, which is nice. Please. Um that's yeah. always a good play if you're going first. Uh if you're going second, you have to be a pansy and be as safe as possible. Like yeah. <laughs> definitely get two Vs down if you can. Yeah. Commit to the Umbreon. If you like want to tilt that match up even more, like maybe you could go to four two Umbreon, which sounds counterintuitive, but you just kind of want them in play yeah. early. Yeah, I'm and you can just play like a two two Urshi or something like that. I think that's reasonable right now in the meta. Mm. Um, but that's really it. Just play like a pansy. Just remember that randomly Houndoom can take KOs for that prize trade. Like it can KO the Metaweta if you want to as well. Um, just to keep that prize race like back in your favor, sort of thing, because that's how they're going to try and do you in right they're gonna try and let the Meloetta go down yeah. then give up like a two prize and then feed you the other stuff um and you can you can do the same thing back to them with houndoom quite often yeah no for sure it's really annoying you know when you lead the umbreon against me you're like yes oh wait a minute wait 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 a sec i have to vrp about if i start another umbreon here because they might just go pow yeah. like it's so annoying you're like i'm trying to get this energy on the active so i can have an easier turn to but i can't i know i can't Oh, yeah. so annoying. <laughs> oh, God, I hate Mew. Oh, I hate it. So much for the passion. Uh, and speaking of Mew, there it is, number one. Yeah, yeah, we all know how good it is. Joe, no one seems to be playing Peony no more. Is it? Is it now dead and certain that that it, uh, that Meloetta is the way to go? I think Meloetta is the way to go for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Would, I wouldn't completely write off Peony. I still think he's like a decent card. But I think everyone's just going burr right now. And if you're the player not going burr, it means that you like lose that mirror that little bit too much. Yeah, true. Uh, so I think let's just vomit cards, basically, <laughs> is the mentality with the deck. Yeah, for sure. It's like whenever you're playing Mew, or when I'm streaming playing Mew, I'm like, oh, we open Mellow uh, Right, Paul, guys, are we sending them to Donk City? <laughs> like, it's literally like, <laughs> that's all I'm thinking most of the time. It is pretty nuts. If you are a Mew player, though, Joe, if you are a Mew aficionado and you're looking to play it some more, are there any sort of, like, looking at this list for that, like we've named off here, are there any sort of adjustments? Like, you mentioned extra, what, third energy, I think you said, third basic. Um, are there any yeah. other sort of things I you think... can do? or? I think seven energy is good. Uh, I think we're leaning so far into Sparkle that like three copies of Sparkle is coming more of a thing, or at least two plus like gears as well as Rosen phones, just to wow. hit that that little bit more. I think we're yeah. getting to that stage, uh, honestly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just keep it simple, right? Just jam pack the deck with items that you can insta play and get that rolling. Second copy of um, Training Court instead of second copy of Rose Tower is decent yeah. as well to again help with Duraludon. Those are kind of the things I would bear in mind, but it literally only has to be like one or two card tweaks if you really want to. I'm still playing two Peony. That's as low as I'll go right now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm also upping my counts of Sparkle and all the terrain, uh, item cards. Yeah. How have you found room for two Peony then? How have you, what, what from the normal list have you cut for that? So I'm at like three counts of a lot of the typical four counts. Okay. So I play like I play like three Great Ball. I play three Cramomatic, okay. um, and I think I play three Rotom Phone as well. Because uh, Rotom Phone's actually not that good turn one unless you're already popping off of your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Great Ball's like reasonable, and Cram is only good sometimes. So I don't feel like I feel like my turn one hands are stronger a lot of the time if I'm the player going first, uh, yeah. where um, with a small disadvantage. To my hand where I'm going second because you don't care about playing Peony uh, unless you feel like you don't have to Meloetta, which the deck is still completely fine not hitting Meloetta turn one. Yeah, it's just no, that sure. you you are like a John Cena slithering in kind of meme uh, <laughs> if you're doing it. You know, is it John? No, it's Randy Orson, right? Yeah, yeah slithering yeah. in for that turn one <laughs> knockout. You know, it just feels disgusting if it actually comes off, but it's not actually mandatory. Like Mew beats a ton of stuff mm. just by efficiently racing the usual way. You know, attacking on turn two rather than turn. One. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I can imagine that taking a knockout turn too. God, that's so slow, yeah. man. That's so slow. God, I hate, I hate me so much. I'm gonna put you on a hot spot here a little bit, Joe. I'm gonna put yeah. you on a hot spot here a little bit. What did you hate more when it was in standard? Mu V Max or ADP? And I know Mu's only been out for a little bit, but come on, just, just enlighten me. Oh Shay, I never disliked either of them. <laughs> The problem. I was the one playing ADP yeah. all this time. I, I love me a bit of ADP. That's all I played uh, back in the day. <laughs> so I mean, if I had to answer, I'd say Mew. Uh, but because I think, even like comparing it to ADP, I just think Mew is way more consistent than what it does. Mm. ADP had bad, like had some bad beats at times where like they missed their turn one and they've put loads of stupid, easy bench prizes on 
like yep. in the game and stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. ADP genuinely had bad matchups, and uh, Mew, even its bad matchups, is out consistencying uh, or it's high rolling against, yes. and uh, that's just a sad thing to see right now. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. It. I don't want to like lay a ban hammer type thing because I know people have been shouting for it on Twitter and whatnot, but I feel like it's <laughs> sus right now. That there, there could definitely be some pieces that get hit. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm exactly the same with you. I thought with ADP, if ADP messed about turn one, they still have to AC at some point. They're going to have to do it. So you always yeah. get that turn back, whether it was turn, I mean, it got as early as turn one, but turn two or turn three, you know what I mean? And the ADP counters had a lot better success rate than 50-50. The fact that if you want to count them, you VMAX now, you're going to play Umbreon and it's still 50-50. Oh, yeah. golly, like, <laughs> it's just, I, I can't stand Mew, honestly. It's so annoying. I can play and I think- Very like, strong. It's yeah. just like, if, I, if I'm in the game, if they don't do this and they always do because they can oh god genesect as well golly and then quamaratic oh what a stupid card oh yeah. it's just like i remember i did i think on stream actually it was a mew mirror they went first and they did some things and i had a pretty trash hand in one cram i was like what well, this cram decides the game tails okay yeah like, it's literally that simple and obviously they yeah. hit heads on theirs so um yeah i'm not a fan of mew but it is the best deck it is, it is unequivocally, and I might be playing it, so I can't really hate it too, too much, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's super strong. 